Welcome back everybody to Pole Barn Garage where today we're digging into the Mustang 2 King Cobra yet again. It's time to upgrade this thing a little bit with a totally refreshed suspension, some new wheels and tires, and getting the power steering leaks fixed. And just some basic stuff to make sure Jess is safe to drive this thing every day. She's been driving it, but it's a squirrely little bastard. So let's let's fix it up a bit. This all started with a power steering leak. The high pressure hose was leaking. I remember that the steering rack is burnt from an engine fire. The rear suspension is completely sagged out of this thing. So I picked up some new leaf springs to throw in there and renovate that. Under the hood here, we've addressed a couple things off camera. Remember how it was burning oil and pushing oil out real bad? Just a little bit of oil kind of everywhere. Remember how I said it was because there wasn't a PCB valve in the valve covers we had on it? Can't breathe good enough. We need to uh, get another pair of valve covers that has another breather. Well, no, the engine's not blown up or wasted. I put these Cobra valve covers on here with a functioning PCB valve and a breather on this side. Hasn't burned a drop or pushed any out since. So that took care of that. The little motor runs great. It's fine. This all began with this. The high pressure hose on the power steering pump's leaking, so I figured, well, We'll change the pump in that hose. And that, of course, evolved into, let's buy lots of stuff and put it in here. No sponsored stuff. It's all out of my pocket. Normal car guy routine, right? I'm going to unbolt the uh, power steering pump. I'm going to get that hose off of there. Then we're going to jack it up. And let's do the front end of the car first. I'm starting up here for no particular reason other than it's right here in front of me. And, you know, I kind of got to warm up to get to working on something. You guys know how that is? You know the power steering pump was missing two bolts? Uh, that was probably why it was wandering and wobbly all over the place. I'll be damned. How about that? The fitting on the high pressure line is stripped out on the pump, so we'll just delete it out of our way instead. Thankfully it leaked, so hopefully there's not a whole lot in it. We can paint all these brackets. In the first video on this car, I just didn't have time to do it. I was kind of in a rush thrashing to get it put together. It'd be nice to clean and paint all this stuff. Well, we got it apart, but there's our pump. We have to remove the pulley off of it and this bracket that attaches to it. Put that on the new pump. Pretty sure these are press-on pulleys. I got this pulley remover installer that I stole from O'Reilly years ago. Pretty straightforward. You just put the clamps on there, zipper with an impact, and the pulley should come right off. Hmm. Go something like this. And somehow you use this to install them, too. We'll figure that one out later. I'm gonna clean that up and paint it, because we actually have the luxury of a little bit of time this time. That's not usually the case. I have cleaned all the bolts. We'll spray them with a little silver so it looks real nice when we put it back together. Chrome bolt kit in a kit. You put that in the powder coating room. It's right next to the CNC machine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that damn trailer hitch was good for something. We'll just put the jack stands under the I-beam and that'll let the suspension drop so I can do the springs. Maybe. We're about to find out. Oh yeah. Ah, all right. Beautiful. Well, let's go ahead and get our pulley pressed on here. In the kit that you can get from O'Reilly or any parts store, or, you know, steal from them like I do. Because of this bolt, you thread down into the shaft and then you just tighten this nut and it presses the pulley on for you. You don't gotta go beating on it and end up, you know, tearing your pump up or anything. It's kinda nice. And there we are. One new power steering pump. Now I'm gonna wait to actually assemble the hose and everything until we get the new rack in the car. Otherwise it'll just be in our way. Before I yank the wheel, look at this. See all that slop? That's no good. So that's actually the inner tie rod in here. It's probably wore out. Uh, yeah, so that, well, either that or it's got a broken tooth, which is possible. Except for I'm not moving the other wheel. So the slop is over here. I think I was correct in my assessment that it needs a steering rack. And I'm also looking at this going, how the hell am I going to get that removed? The first headache we'll have to deal with here is getting the tie rod separated. I got some new ball joints. Wouldn't mind throwing those in here either. This thing's so caked in oil. It was pushing all that oil out. Everything is just caked and grimed. So I'm going to clean it up a bit first. Get these tie rods separated. Powder key ain't coming out of there. Who am I kidding? Mighty pickle fork out here. The funniest tool in the toolbox. And... Pretty simple. The reason you have to use a pickle fork is of course the tie rod is a spherical joint with a tapered shaft 
and that taper actually seats up in the spindle and that's where you get that like pressed in effect. This tie rod is frozen. Oh my God, this thing is very near death. Let me go ahead and get the sway bar out of our way. And that doesn't want to come out at all. That is a sway bar end link and it is stuck. The sleeve inside that lower bushing is super stuck on the bolt and it's pretty much trashed. You can't buy that. That's really great. I'm so happy about that. This is there weird, man? I mean, look at that. That's a, that's what holds it together. Let me try to get that weird hex off the top. And oh, Shoot, I don't know. Well, that broke off immediately. I was just using a crescent wrench, so it didn't take a whole lot to snap that. Uh, so now we are officially boned. And broken. There's one of those. Let's ignore the sway bar dilemma for now and see if we can get the rack out of this thing. I'm not going to fool myself and think it's going to be easy, but it doesn't look too bad. It's just going to come right off, right? <laughs> nope. Uh... Are you that easy? Am I missing something? Yeah, here it goes. Oh, the, the steering shaft. Here's our new one. Looks like we're gonna have to get the splined part off of the column. That's not gonna be a lot of fun, but it is just one bolt, so maybe it won't be too bad. It's down, it's way down in there if you can't tell. Bolt that clamps that onto the column is a 12 millimeter. I mean, they were really stretching to get in line with the metric system, weren't they? Ain't nobody ever used a 12 millimeter for anything. Oh yeah, it's gonna slide right off. I'll be damned. Come on now. It just come right off. Real easy. Yeah. It's not too bad. Life is good out here. Come on out of there. What am I not getting here? Everything's loose. Taking a hammer to things that you want to keep, not usually a good idea, but in this situation, I don't think I have any choice. So I started the nut on a few threads to try to protect it, and I'm just gonna take the big old hammer to it, and see what happens. Like a lot of nothing. There ain't no room to do shit in here. I mean, you can't move. I've found a way to do this, I think. I gotta pull this cross member back here out of the way, and I think I can throw an impact on that bolt and hopefully just unthread it out of the rack. It's just stuck in there. Passenger side ain't, but you know, we got we got to get that bolt back so we can get it out. Uh, so I got to pull this cross member out back here, and it's meant to be removed. But God bless, if I have tried. I mean, look at this. Look at this pile of tools here. This is this is everything I've tried to pull this damn bolt out of here. But you know what? There's always a way to do something. You understand? Yeah, that's something I learned from my dad, my grandpa. Is there's always a way to do it. You know what I mean? That's your job, right? As a man is to is to find a way to do it you know you don't well i just give up on it you know you don't do that you don't do that you, you get every damn tool you got out of your toolbox and then you get that thing out of there you understand what i mean and that's that's your that should be your mentality so what i end up doing it's just as simple as take this piece of shit harbor freight wrench and this piece of shit hammer here we beat it until the sun bitch comes off because we ain't asking no more you understand that sun bitch gonna come out of there and you know why because I'm kicking its ass right now. All right, we got that cross member out of our way now. Now I can get on the bolt. It goes all the way through the rack. Pull about the backside and the rack will it just fall right off, right? Yeah. Oh, God. We got the some bitch off there, but the bushing shell is stuck on the bolt. I need the bolt to come out just a little bit so that that rack can drop out. Boy, this is a, this ain't easy, is it? <laughs> we are almost free. I got that bolt out. Big old bolts. The shell of this bear, the shell of this bushing is not letting go. It's rusted to the bolt and uh, not playing nice. It won't, it just won't come out. Uh, I guess I'm gonna try fire, even though everything's covered in oil and this is a really bad idea. It should go with that saying, but this is a bad idea. The fire did the trick. That is the old rack. That is the new one. We need to save this little stub here for the return line. New bushings are already pre-installed in the new rack, so that's kind of nice. Jess is cleaning the sway bar, going to paint it, and uh, put some new bushings on it. Dress things up a little bit. Mm, yeah. Oh. I have both of these racks centered-ish. We can get them close 
to where the car can at least drive to an alignment shop afterwards. That would be nice. With both steering racks roughly centered, I'm going to get a measurement from the mounting hole, be easier on this side, to the middle of that tie rod is roughly 16 inches, 17 and a half ish. I have to disassemble them so I can get the lock that's off of it and put them on the new rack. Professional. Another way you can do this is you can actually count the threads that were showing on the original tie rod end. That's very dependent on if they're the same or if they're threaded the same. <laughs> Let go. Got my Malco locking pliers here. Made in USA, baby. Crank these down with an Allen. They'll take a hell of a beating. If these won't do it, I don't know what will. <laughs> yeah. And 16-ish. Very precise measurements right there. I'm gonna keep cleaning off under that cesspool there and throw some black paint at it, you know, so that it's all brand new. And then we'll come back to this. Let's try and do this. What's gonna bite me in the ass here is trying to get that steering shaft splined correctly. I already know this. So since I know it going into it, shouldn't be a problem. Hanging off the bolts. That way it won't, hopefully it won't just run away on me. You know what, I'm gonna take the rag joint apart like I should have done in the first place. This is the spline doohickey that goes on this and there's one flat spot in it that lines up with the flat on the splines and there was no way in hell I was ever gonna get that done in the car. Now we only have to worry about putting two bolts in. That was a smart way to do it, but hey, this is how you learn. There's a little chamfer in the shaft here. That's where the bolt, the set bolt here has to ride and that keeps it from being able to pull off. So we're gonna leave it loose for now because we can use that little bit of slack to help us get it in. Try to get the steering wheel to where it's, you know, straight. I don't wanna put this together and have the steering wheel be upside down. Very easily and gently install this. Bolt this bitch on there. Never touch it again, please God. I gotta hook up the return line on it and that's it. Put that cross member back up in there. The rack is in place. Everything's here. It's way tighter than it was. I think we need to do ball joints. Now they don't have a lot of play in them, but they're right here. It's not that bad of a job overall. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, they actually the control arm bushings look okay. I think I'm gonna leave them alone uh, for now anyway. Try to clean this up a bit before I dive in. It's pretty gnarly over here. Yeah. 400 layers of undercoating is what that is. Oh, getting a little bit late tonight, so I'll probably just take the shocks out of it. Really tackle the rest of this mess tomorrow. Let's get the ball joints out of this thing. We're just gonna separate the spindle and leave everything attached to it. One thing you could do to be a little safer, you leave the nut on a few threads and then separate it. You know, I won't do that. This is a ball joint separator. It's like a pickle fork, but big. We'll separate the upper first. This is where it goes, ba -dong! Now we slowly lower the jack and hope the spring doesn't kill us. <sighs> Watch out. That spring's caught on the back side of that arm. You know, he might just hang out there. I don't like to ever leave my brake hoses all tight like that. So. Just set it up on a jack stand or something, you know. It's even the lower ball joint in these cars, apparently, they bolt in. You got two bolts right here where the strut rod is attached to, and two bolts in the end of, two rivets rather, in the end of the A arm that we'll have to drill out. I guess as long as I get behind it and unbolt that, it'll be okay. I'm safe back here. Nothing happened. Both the nuts are off of here. I just gotta dry, grind out these rivets here. Then the ball joint should come out at least. Um, grind these rivets out. You grind the heads off of them until you can see like the barrel of the rivet. And then you just take a drill bit and run through the middle. See that little like half moon shape there? Yeah. That's where we're gonna drill. You don't want your ball joints to be sloppy, right? So just try to 
drill at the same size as the bolts that you your new ball joint came with. Why are these not labeled? What kind of god awful hell? Is, oh, look at this. Oh, they are labeled. Oh, barely. I can't read that. Can't see it on camera. Somewhere in here. There's a plate on the top of the ball joint that holds the rivet in. Let's see if we can separate it. Yep. And you can see here, those are the rivets that they, the factory installs them with rivets. We'll have to do the same thing three times on the upper ball joint. But it's really not too bad. It's just kind of labor intensive. <laughs> I'll ham it up in here. It sits over the studs back there. Just bolt it in with our new hardware. Actually, I forgot to put on this. This centers the ball joint, I believe. I just put my head right here. Up. Torqued. Torqued. Tell you what, I listened to some of you old timers about, you know, getting something to save your knees. Good call, guys. Good call. <laughs> my knees have felt a lot better. Oh. I gotta put a disc on this. Let's get that upper one out of there. I like to use the cutoff wheel because I can get right under the lip of them and I can just cut the head of the rivet off flat. The biggest thing is try not to cut the control arm, right? I mean, if you nick it, that's okay. Just, you know, don't cut through your control arm. That's bad. All right, now let's try to air chisel it. And that's an upper ball joint. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to drill the rest of these rivets out. I'm gonna try to drive the remnants of these rivets out. Well, that one was easy, it just fell out. Let's get our new mystery meat brand ball joint here. Let me just zip this bad boy down. Let's hang it from the upper ball joint here. Close, go on. Get pulling off yeah. the jack. Yeah, just seating. It tightened to the next hole that we can get a cotter key in. Put the tie rod on. And we'll of course torque this to spec just like we did everything else. We got the driver's side together. That's all assembled now. Uh, gotta reload my grease gun here and we'll reload it with some vintage Amico high performance lubricating grease. Yeah, that's some good stuff there. Pump our brand new ball joints and tie rods full of grease. We can put our shocks back in and our sway bar back on. Next step here is to put the sway bar back in. Uh, and I think I have a solution for the end link problem. But before we do that, we got to put these shells on our new bushings. Rubber mallet will get them started enough that you can bolt it up. Look. Something like that. Boy, these new bushings are going to have to smush down a lot. That's what I get for buying new things like an idiot. down. Did it just break? Yep. Oh. Pushing my luck there, but I, it wasn't flush. It's inside the frame. There was no way. And drill it. So I have a couple ideas for what to do here. And my first one is little spherical tie rod ends. I had these on the old tubular A-arms that were in my Le Mans and uh, they're not ideal, but probably work. The only thing is, is, the nuts are welded in place for adjustment, I think by me. So my other thought was, drive this stud out here that's holding it on, and then put a normal sway bar link in it, which would definitely work. But considering that stud also holds the ball joint in, I don't know if that's a good idea. So maybe we go with the spherical joints. Let's go see if we can get some fine thread, all thread tomorrow from the hardware store. Try to bolt these in. Hopefully that will work. Also, I have broken off bolt and sway bar. I don't know what to do about it. So I decided to do nothing. A couple tees later, and I'm pretty sure I could make this work. Just have to make my own bushings here on my lathe. I think this will work. I mean, it's not going to be ideal, but it will hold the sway bar up, and that's really all we can ask for. I need to make a slight modification to this side. I'll show you my brilliance in a moment. 
plenty of room on this side for whatever reason. Look at my amazing genius. We were able to use the studs that were in them by flipping them upside down and cutting the nuts off of them. And uh, that worked out fairly well, I gotta say. Will it work? Forever? Probably not, but maybe by then I can figure out or find the correct ones. It's a temporary stopgap, but it should work for a little while. I've drilled a small hole through the bolt that broke off here. It's kind of at an angle, but I think I can get another bolt in. Ah. Man. Fine, we'll get a bigger one. <laughs> Oh, it actually knocked out the bolt. Oh. Oh, it knocked out the weld nut. That's... Ooh, I... Oh, is that the only hold that accesses that? Yes. But... I might be able to... get a nut in there. You know? Yeah. I got a little hole in the frame here. I'll drop my nut in. I'll try... to fish for it. There it is. See it? Yeah. Now, are you f***ing kidding me? That's not a 3 8 <laughs> I'm fine, I'll drill it out. Oh no. I can't read these things. You know that's gonna be a problem, it's gonna get stuck. No. See that? Yep. Perfection. What happens here is I end up filling the frame with like 40 nuts and eventually one of them will land over the hole. Is it the golden nut? Oh, it is. So this is gonna really suck for the next guy, who's probably me. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, future me, that somebody left an unwelded nut inside of a frame rail for you to deal with. Got it. 50 nuts later. God, only two. Well, yeah, same thing, 50. Gentle now, gentle now. Don't, don't loosen it, piece of shit. <laughs> Dude, just tighten it down with the impact. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm gonna hate that eventually. Oh boy. What? Hey, the sway bar's bolted in real nice now. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, man. Let's forget about that immediately. JD, start pre soaking these things. Maybe we can save the U bolts. <laughs> Make sure you get the shackle bolts too, front and rear. Yep. Well, let's put some rear springs in there. And here's my brothers here with uh, JCS Projects on YouTube. Check that out here. And uh, yeah, so uh, these are crusty as hell. The rear shackle bolt in these is a pressed in bolt with a nut on the end. I'm not unbolting the shackle from the frame of the car. It's kind of hard to see up in here. See up in here, you're supposed to unbolt it from the frame of the car and drop it out. However, the springs are literally held in with E-clips. The whole car is held together with fender clips. That's right. That's the quality you got with the Mustang, too. Yeah, I'm not messing with that, so there's going to be some cutting and violence here, but if I could get it disassembled tonight, I'd be happy. Is this the actual 8-inch rear end? Yes. V8 car's got 8 inches. Alright. First step is remove the shocks and then let the rear end fall and decapitate you. Why didn't you fall as far as you did the last time? You've got the jack underneath it still. Oh, look at me being safe. Should I go for U-bolts next? Probably, and then shackles. Sure. I bet they'll unbolt. I've been soaking them. Will the U-bolts come out? Everybody place your bets. All right, we're gonna do the lefty and then the righty and try to work it off. Yeah. Don't touch that. No, it's... Ow! I'm, I'm fairly impressed with that. That's one out of four. I hope you place your bets correctly. Otherwise, you owe me money. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you got that. I think I had a go-kart growing up with bigger brakes than this. <laughs> oh! oh! I was too much for it. <laughs> <laughs> your raw power was too much for it. Shit. You just gotta fall out of the goddamn car. No. I think it's a sway bar. I bet you it's a sway bar. Yeah. I mean, it is still bolted to it. These springs are trash. Look at this rebound clip. I don't think I should be able to do that. No. <laughs> hey, if I only have to buy one, that improves my odds of finding one at the farm <laughs> store. Look at the nut on that. 
Hmm? It's like a hat. Oh, gosh. <laughs> what are you hoping to accomplish here? I don't know. <laughs> Man, if I'm the one that broke one, I'm going to feel dumb. <laughs> well, it didn't fall out yet. No. That's unfortunate. I mean, I thought it'd like half remove itself by the time we'd get this far. They usually do. Oh, she's going. Watch her hand. Oh. Well, you've got like workman's comp and stuff, don't you? <laughs> oh. It is no longer still there. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you notice your rubber bushings say Mustang on them? I know, right? Well, this one doesn't because they're not there. A little gentle separation is all it really needed. Yeah, I think the spring could come out, possibly. I don't want to mess with the sway bar legs on it again. I don't know how good of an idea this is, but I'm just going to guess that these bolts aren't going to come out, right? So, And I can't buy shackles for the car, so we'll just take a sawzall. Mm, that's gonna smell so good. Just think about it. You only have three more of these to do once you get through this. <laughs> Death wheel might work better. I might be able to just. Ah! 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 <laughs> this is gonna work. Am I in a bad spot? Probably. There is no safe place. What is this thing doing? <laughs> Five hours later. If it, if it wasn't clear, what this is is, is a press bolt of some variety. It's like a lug nut stud, kind of. I'm going to guess there's probably a little spline or something here that's bit into the shackle. The, it has a nut on this side, but this presses in, and they did that for some god-awful reason, Ford. That's a gas tank, That's by the thing. way. And you should always grind towards your gas tank. <laughs> I don't, I can't do it any other way. <laughs> oh my God, the jack stand just moved. It's not doing anything. <laughs> the only oh. thing, perfect. Hang on, let me get a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, get the air hammer and I'll just brrr. I'd just like to point out that this jack stand is only in here for moral support. <laughs> it just didn't want to be away from its friends, so it's hanging out. It's a safety. This is, I do this for you guys. I want you to feel like I'm safe. Things have escalated. I he brought just... up the pruner. <laughs> <laughs> See, this will Well, no, I can feel the bolt. Oh, actually. Just use it by hand. Yeah, you're definitely on the bolt. Yeah. Let me try a shorter blade that I can bottom out against that and let it really chew on it. I bought the best ones, Harbor Freight. So. Do they have any other brand besides Hercules there anymore? Yeah, this is the best one. Oh, it is? Yeah. Well, you went all out. Got it. One. Only three more to go. Well, let me bust out the pruning blade for the next one. Uh, rubber is basically like a tree, a rubber tree, if you will. So the pruning blade should work remarkably well. <laughs> this seems, <laughs> this seems a little, ah, f***ing damn it. That motherfucker's hot. Woo. Was that the blade? Yeah. Oh my God. I got a brand. <laughs> You're now part of the Hercules gang. I got my safety glasses on. <laughs> it's working. It's working. Dude, ooh. Ooh. I'm just gonna ignore that. Put on safety glasses. What happens? I cook my hand. 75 years later. I, I wouldn't touch anything over there. Why? Look at that. That'll be a big old blister. That is nice and white. That sucks. That, that kind of hurts. Well, this is definitely going to come right out, right? Woo! Ow. Come on, baby. All right. Is there a, did it slide out at all? The bolt? No. No. Well, that's half of the bolt out. Really good progress, if I do say so myself. I think you're doing great. Uh -huh. 2,000 years later. There's the spring. Holy cow. Yeah, we're going to be jacked up. That is stretched way down. I think it's just so sagged out because the dude was pulling a boat with it. 
Well, that's what I would use my Mustang tool for. Of course! Uh, that's salvageable. There's no center pin. It's rotted off. It's in here. That's the leaf spring. I thought it drove a little funny. <laughs> Holy sh**. I've never seen anything like that. Not that bad. It drove fine. It really did. It wasn't dog walky or anything. Really? Uh-uh. That's that whole lower put. That's that this. is this. That's, that's this. That's the spring. It is literally the. Sp I'm peeling the spring out of here with my hands. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing holding the leaf pack together. I knew something was fucking back here. <laughs> I am a mechanic. Broken half. It is broken half. Oh my god. Wow, this car was destroyed. There we go. Very nice. That one's salvageable. There's a whole piece of spring missing. Okay, well, we'll get the other side out. Approximately 300 Harbor Freight Sawzall blades later. Uh, 12 Amazon off-brand batteries for my DeWalt Sawzall. Uh, corded Sawzall. They got the spring out. Initial inspection shows uh, it's uh, probably just as bad as the others. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yep, the freaking center pin plate is broke again. Yep. Back out here today, I made a run to the farm store. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't have the correct U-bolts. Supposed to be a uh, 7 16 two and a half inch bolt. Well, and these are uh, half inch, two and a half. That was the best I could do. So what we'll do, is we will just drill out the plate and upgrade to the bigger U-bolt. I couldn't find these spring isolators and they're pretty bad. I think we should go try to find some kind of piece of rubber to maybe reinforce it a little bit, you know, just give it a little extra. Let's go see what we can find. All we need is a, a mud flap or something like that. I think Stubbs has some mud flaps on it. Oh yeah, that's plenty thick enough. We'll just take about half of his mud flap and uh, that should that should uh, get her going. And Stubbs kind of has a short skirt now, but uh, we can cut that up, use that free of charge. I took a chunk out of that mud flap, about this big. Now, I can just reinforce this bushing with a little extra rubber. I have to drill a hole in it for the pin. But, I mean, this isn't ideal, but you can't buy them. So, what are you going to do? Put this in the workbench here. Get it squared up in my jig. We're going to drill a very precise hole. There it is. Got to hog out these top plates of the clamshell. I'm going to turn that hole into a half inch hole. Got to do the same thing to the bottom plate so the U-bolt will fit through it. I reckon this front one probably goes in first. It's gonna get it kind of hanging in here for now. Oh boy, that shackle don't want to move. The shackle swings under here. They don't want to move far enough forward to catch the new spring because the spring is shorter because it actually has an arc in it, whereas it did not before. You know, I think some help just arrived actually. Maybe I get somebody to put a pry bar on that shackle. Thanks to my buddies TJ and Aiden that stopped by. We got that some bitch in there, barely. Uh, it took a lot of finagling to do that that way. But thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, bud. Now we just have to do it again. Easy. Oh, one more. <laughs> no, the is this is called a learning experience. It's also called free labor. We got this side together, and uh, I don't love it, but it looks like it's working. We get that side together, then we'll. Tighten everything at once. Aiden, as you're zapping that on, look on top of this pack here, on top of the spring. You see that little raised edge inside there? It sits up in this, and that's what centers the axle. Okay. So as you zip it on, we just want to make sure that that seats in there. We don't want to crush it. Basically, what that means is you're going to zip one down, and then you're going to move to like the next corner, kind of like you're tightening a wheel or something. Yeah. All right, keep going. She's. Oh, I probably need to let the uh, jack off of it, eh? <laughs> Run out of thread. So these farm store U-bolts are always really long. We have to cut some of the thread off just so we can get a socket on them. But that's no big deal. Well, this is completely assembled, and there's zero chance I could have done this without TJ and Aiden. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm gonna finish the job though uh, with this. There we go. <laughs> it's all new now. Nope. See, this will cover up where that U bolt isn't quite straight. You'll never notice it once it's flat black. It'll cover up that bushing I didn't replace. Here are the wheels I got for this. These are, I don't know what they're called. They're off of Jags or something like that. 
they conveniently only sent me two center caps for all four so this side of the car will be assembled 15 inch wheel we got 205 60 on the front instead of the uh, 13s that were on it and the lug nuts are courtesy of lugnutguys.com get your new nuts at lugnutguys.com let's get this assembled and i know we're gonna have fitment problems with the rear so i already know this won't fit and that's because i'm dumb and ordered an eight inch wheel and the only thing they had for an eight was one inch offset to the inside uh, which conveniently places it directly into the leaf spring so i ordered these precision wheel spacers these are actually decent ones but uh well that ain't gonna work anyway is it lug nut stud sticks out this is flush that ain't gonna work mm. and they stick out just a little bit yeah. these studs have just this little flat piece here. There's no threads on it, it's not structural. This little piece here is gonna end up holding us out, I think, and I don't wanna put another spacer on it, that'd be dumb. You just see that little bit there? So I'm just gonna cut that off, and I think that's gonna give us enough room, or close to enough room. What I'll do to cut that off and not trash the studs, we're gonna use sacrificial lug nuts for this. See, it's, it's an ancient ritual. We run these down, and whenever we cut the end of that off, we're likely gonna leave a burr on the thread that off we should be able to put a new put it back on pretty easily see how the threads right on now they're just inside of that look at that got lots of room now i think we're actually going to be safe here i may have to trim the inside of this quarter just a smidge but not bad. So this is some Chinese red Loctite came with JD's wheel spacers for his car, the Kia, on the other channel outside the barn. Check it out. I bet it's not actually red Loctite. So I, I don't have any blue and I don't want to actually use good Loctite in case I ever have to get to the brake. I just want something that'll keep them from vibrating loose. And I bet this, uh, you know, mystery fluid here in this little vial will work just fine. Just a little drop in there. One drop. I tweaked out the uh, front tie rods a little just to make them a little more straight. We'll have to do a little at home alignment after we get it on the ground. Looks good. Oh man, look how much higher it sits. Yeah. Oh, that looks awesome. Oh, we got a mile. Heck yeah. But it looks pretty badass. But we gotta get this front end squared up a little bit more so we can go test drive it. It'll need an actual alignment, of course. But for now, we can, we can, we can get it close. So you can see right now, both tires are towed in, probably about an inch. So I'm just gonna get under there. We'll uh, extend the tie rods, push them out a little bit, and then we'll get the tape measure out and try to, you want like a 16th of an inch of toe in or so. There's no sleeve on these. You just gotta grab the inner tie rod, which is round. It doesn't have a flat on it for a wrench. Very convenient, thank you for it. As I push down on this, loosening the outer tie rod, it's pushing the tire out. So I'm just gonna get it to where it's kind of eyeball close, and then we'll bust the tape measure out. By eyeball, that's quite a bit closer. This one's towed out a smidge. But what we gotta do to reset the suspension, is put it neutral, roll the car a little bit, and that will now reset our suspension. See how it was towed out a bit? Now it's beep. It's pretty damn close, I bet. You pick a tread on the tire, second one from the inside, that theoretically is the same for both tires. We want to be on the back side of the wheel, say it's 60 inches, and then we measure the front one from the same tread and say it's 59 inches, that would be one inch of toe because it's one inch narrower on the front. It just has the second tread from the inside. I do two. It is 56, 54 and three quarters. So we have an inch and a quarter of toe, that's too much. So what that means is we have an inch and a quarter on the front. We need to get about what? 0.6, about half an inch on each side to tow out. So a few turns. Lengthened each side, a few turns. Now we have to reset the suspension. Forward, jam it in gear. Kaboom, the money shot. We're at 55 and 3 eighths on the front, 55 and a half on the back, eighth of an inch. That's close enough. With that out of the way, there's one thing left to do. Let's cut this damn trailer hitch off here. So I'm just gonna cut this off. It's triangulated with some quarter inch plate here. Get this big old I-beam in here, which I'm gonna leave because I honest to God think that's probably adding a lot of structure to the back of this thing. 
Not that it needs it, it's not rusty, but these cars just kind of sucked when they were new. It's got two bolts that are never gonna budge, but I'll give them a shot. Really? <laughs> I would have never thought. Well, I'll take that. I got a carbide sawzall blade that should cut through this pretty good, I think. There's so many acorn shells falling out. <laughs> See, we're, we're oscillating the car so <laughs> yeah. it falls out. There! Yes, look at that. Goodness. The only thing left to do is fire it up, burp the power steering system check for leaks because you know that's why we started doing this in the first place <laughs> and here we are but uh, that doesn't feel tight I should tighten that I don't think I actually tightened that oh, I didn't tighten the clamp though so let me uh, do a couple things here and then we'll fire it up I guess everything's tight we'll find out when I make a bloodbath here in a minute <laughs> That's a whole new car, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I hope it drives as good as it looks. Let's see what we did. A little bounce here before. The taller tire on the back, it should settle down the gears too. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, I put some rubber back there on those freaking louvers or something. Jesus. Yeah, they're very annoying. wheels that are centered instead of offset like that I think that would help but all in all I don't think there's much to be too mad about here you can drive it yeah. lost power steering belt's still there so that's not good maybe it just got another air pocket in it yeah. looks like it puked a little yeah, it did right there. not a lot though so it didn't leak out. I'm gonna look at the rear wheels. It seems like they're falling off or anything. I just don't trust wheel spacers like at all. Haven't been backing off or anything. I think a lot of them just, I think that bike is just so damn stiff. How come no power steering now? But... <laughs> Our detachable hood pop. <laughs> Down. I, I think you got a bad pump. After all that. It's gotta be 
you shitting me? That was the only thing it needed. Well, the rest of the car is great at least, so that's cool. A little autocross action at the Catholic Church here. steering came back there like at rpm it has a little bit so that tells me it's it's the pump the veins and the pump are wore out or something it needs more <laughs> speed to... what a joke that's a rock auto chinese pump for you wah, wah. well the handling characteristics are vastly improved though <laughs> that was good yeah that was good that was fun <laughs> oh it's back yeah yeah, at speed it works fine when you don't need it. Second gear scratch. Oh, and I missed third. Nick. <laughs> this thing's pretty good now, though. Uh, let me get another pop that I want to order. And I think you'll have a pretty nice little car to drive. Uh, yeah. But that's all I got time for. I'll be waiting another week for another pump, as is tradition with this vehicle. <laughs> uh, I can't ever just have it easy. So we'll see you guys next time on Pull Bar Garage, where uh, I'll be working on who the hell knows what by then. I, I don't know. See ya. Oh, buy merch. Buy merch. I never do that. Please, please buy a hat. Buy a sweater. You know? I mean, buy they're cheap they're as cheap as i can make them people okay you know i'm trying my best they're like walmart price go to pullbarmerch.com and pick you up a sweater especially they're great this time of year see you later amazing i've repaired the power steering i am just that good of a mechanic i don't know what happened to it but it's it's okay now so we'll just ignore it until it is a problem until i call you while you're at work <laughs> <laughs>